Hello guys, Matt Smith here with you today. Thanks for joining me again. Today we are talking about the much wondered about railgun weapon system. Yes, the science fiction weapon that we all believe one day should be on naval ships, should be on tanks, should be carried by infantrymen, whatever it may be, these things are bloody impressive. A scientific wonder, so to speak, because at the end of the day, the thing that this thing can do is very, very impressive. Unfortunately though, there's a lot of controversy about this particular weapon system in the military industry. This is because a number of different features that are becoming very, very difficult to try and get this thing working fully. First and foremost, its size, its power usage and all that good stuff, but primarily, the electromagnetic railgun may not actually see action the way the Navy for the United States military originally planned. So let's talk a little bit about it today because I thought it'd be rather interesting considering all the new developments that have recently come out for this weapon system and the kind of, you know, scientific upgrades that have been placed onto it to allow it to do a lot more than it previously did many years ago. So as part of the proposed 171.5 billion fiscal year 2018 budget request, the Navy carved out a hefty $2 billion for a suite of futuristic weapon systems ripped straight from the pages of a science fiction flick. And a good part of that cash is actually going towards the service's much needed touted electromagnetic railgun. According to a new report from the Congressional Research Service, the service is on track to equip guided missile destroyers and cruisers with the fancy launcher within hopefully the next 10 years. However guys, despite this progress, it appears that the next generation cannon won't immediately see combat the way the Navy originally had planned to do so. The recent reports indicate that the Navy has made significant progress in developing a tactical railgun prototype that can muster the energy to fire repeatedly in short intervals of time, a necessity during combat engagements downrange. Office of Naval Research Electromagnetic Railgun Program Chief Tom Butcher told the National Defense Magazine on June 15th that the ONR weapons contractors BAE System and General Atomics are currently developing and testing a new barrel design and sufficiently devastating pulse-powered systems that can actually fire five specifically engineered shells with 32 megajoules of muzzle energy each minute. That is an incredible amount of firepower, guys, for a round going down range. Now, all of this points out for a very much anticipated and, to be honest, an extremely overly hyped railgun project as Congress dives into the Department of Defense's fiscal year for the 2018 budget request. But there have been recent reports suggesting that the prototype weapon systems for the Navy will eventually mount on spearhead class expeditionary fast transports like the USNS Trenton and won't actually be used downrange to defeat enemy armor and wreak havoc on critical infrastructure which it was originally designed for. Instead, they'll likely focus on a less dignified task of intercepting incoming ballistic missiles or missiles that are being tasked to basically knock out aircraft carriers. On the June 9th of this year's report, the Naval Affairs Specialist Ronald O'Bourke checks in on the status of three of the Navy's most futuristic weapons that have been underdeveloped for years. Solid state lasers, the deliciously destructive hypervelocity projectiles, and the beloved railgun. The report compiled to help Congress assess elements of the DoD's budget request. It's rather interesting because this report was really designed to give a window for the Navy and its Congress members uh, the ability to see how much it's going to cost and the lawmakers really are going to be the ones who have the final say as to how the fleet actually goes to war and what weapon systems it's using. Basically, there are no fearsome visions of tank shredding, bunker busting, hull puncturing carnage that usually accompanies footage of electromagnetic railguns at work. Instead though, this report focused on the technology's strategic application as additional surface defense against anti-ship cruise missiles and ballistic missiles. The Navy originally began developing the EMRG as a Naval Surface Fire Support Weapon, or NSFS weapon, for supporting US Marines operating ashore, but subsequently determined that the weapon was also potentially really good for defending against ASBMs. Basically guys, this weapon is more primarily designed for knocking out missiles and ICBMs than it is really engaging other ships. So basically this presentation really does understate the railgun's offensive potential and to be honest it really makes a more favoured cost effective systems such as solid state lasers which currently have the beam power to actually destroy unmanned aerial vehicles and small boats that with the appropriate power source can also counter incoming munitions such as ICBMs 
Which, at the end of the day, it's either that or solid state railguns. You know fine well that they're probably going to focus on something more like a laser right now than they are for the railgun, which is kind of sad. You know, there's a lot more remaining engineering challenges for the railgun. The barrel life, its power systems, ship integration for its size, all of which require extremely costly new materials and extended energy efficiency. And this may simply just dissuade lawmakers, Congress, members of, you know, uh, the American military from pursuing the railgun, which is kind of upsetting, really. This may, of course, be totally fine with the Navy, though. In recent years, branch officials have slowly walked back the rising hype surrounding the futuristic cannon, especially since the realization that the railgun's specialized HVP shells are just as deadly out of the barrel of, say, an M777 howitzer on the Marine firebase downrange. We thought railguns were simply something that we're going after, Deputy Defense Secretary Robert Work stated in May 2016. But it turns out that the powder guns firing the same hypervelocity projectiles get you almost as much as you would get out of the electromagnetic railgun. But it's something that they can do much faster on the actual, you know, artillery pieces. But something tells us that with more than a decade worth of research and development under the belt for the Pentagon, the planners are more inclined to couch the railgun's terrifying power more than just completely dump it for packaging of missile defenses. There's many different aspects that can contribute towards this, guys, whether it be funding, politicians, and we all know what politicians are like when it comes to French budgets and funding and, you know, making things come to fruition as the, you know, military decide on what they want to do with it. On paper, the Navy's railgun seems doomed to a pedestrian life of knocking missiles out of the sky, but if there are contractors that can keep the lawmakers enthralled with its futuristic vision, the terrifying cannon can maybe continue firing on further into the future, increase its system's power, its firing capacity, and who knows what the future may hold for this impressive weapon system. Now honestly guys, we all talk about it in the background, about the future of railguns and how they could potentially be placed onto tanks. I'm going to come from my own personal opinion again here, because I always like to throw my little personal input at the end here. If you honestly think that in the next 50 years this technology is not going to be implemented on some sort of weapon system in the US military or a military around the world, you are crazy. There is too much being invested in this, too much uh, technology at hand here for this weapon system to just be dumped and forgotten about. I just in my own personal opinion have a guarantee of myself that in the next 30 to 40 years this technology will be mounted on some sort of weapons platform with highly highly impressive results being able to do its job which you know let's be honest here there's no real defined job role for this weapon system yet whether it be taking out ships knocking out missiles out of the sky or just taking on tanks it's not really been defined we're really just experimenting with its capabilities its puncturing of armor its ability to actually knock missiles out of the sky trajectories you know velocities we're really just in the scientific stages instead of we're not on the application side yet but let's be honest I would love to see railguns being implemented on tanks in the future. It's science fiction, guys. We all know it is. It's a huge feat to put a weapon system like that onto a main battle tank or some sort of tank or artillery system. But like I said, once again, I think you're really kidding yourself if you think that these kind of weapon systems are not going to be coming into effect for modern day weapons in the long term future. I'm not talking about 20, 30 years down the line. I'm talking about 50, 60, maybe even 100 years down the line. If you really think that we're going to continue using conventional weapon systems, I think you're going to be very sadly mistaken. There's going to be a number of reasons for this. First of all, oil will eventually run out. We will run out of oil. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And we will have to rely more on different forms of energy production, whether it be nuclear reactors, etc, etc, you know, intense solar powered energy, I don't know. But when it comes to munitions, if you can produce a vehicle that can be powered by a huge energy source, which who knows, you know, how that would come to be, you think you would capitalize on that power to be able to use, you know, the similar sort of platform as the railgun or these lasers that are producing to engage other vehicles or aircraft, weapon systems, whatever it may be. I really do think that the conventional warfare will stay around for a very long time. Conventional munitions, you know, artillery, guns and weapon platforms like that. They're not going to go for a long, long time. Definitely not in my lifetime. I don't see us having any kind of major developments. As I said before, the, the complexity with the railgun is so huge that we're really not going to get past um, 
the capability of trying to get the power to power something like that into a small system. So I think conventional munitions are still going to be around for quite some time, whether it be, you know, missiles or, uh, you know, complex missiles or, you know, maybe lasers will come into effect a little bit more than, than the railgun system will do. But I don't think it's going to be in my lifetime I'm going to see it happen. But I think... For sure, in my opinion, we are going to see this railgun technology come back uh, in its glory in the long-term future. And is it going to be effective? Who knows? I probably won't be alive the day they're using. Hopefully, I won't be because something is going very, very wrong, and we're probably all at World War Eight or something like that by then. Um, but I think it's definitely a, a possibility. It's going to come into play one day. There's going to be someone who's going to develop something that can allow this gun to actually fire these projectiles at huge distances and knock out of the vehicles. It's complete science fiction, guys. I'm not going to lie. It's completely, you know, let's be honest, it's completely bullshit. I mean, I'm kind of just making this up, but it, it is an opinion. It is something that I think we have to accept is conventional munitions are not going to be here to stay. And I think it's something that we should consider and the militaries around the world should continue investing their money in to make sure that... Uh, you know, they're keeping up with potential futuristic upgrades we may need to engage other vehicles, helicopters, planes, ships, whatever it may be. So guys, I'd love to hear your opinion on railguns and what do you think is going to be the future of weapon systems? Do you think the railgun has had too much money pumped into it to a failed cause? Do you think it's something that's not going to come to fruition? It's just kind of a wasted effort? Do you think lasers are going to be the next best thing? You know, are they going to be the, the weapon system we try and focus on our, our funding and our military research on more than anything else? Or do you just think conventional weapon systems, just like, you know, cartridges and explosives, are going to be around for such a long time that, you know, we're just going to stick with it? If it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of thing. I'd love to hear your opinion. Let me know in the comment section below. I'd love it if you could also hit that like button. And if you are new to my channel and you enjoyed today's video, hit that subscribe button. If you do enjoy my videos as well, feel free to hit the little bell button there to notify you of any upcoming gaming or military related videos. And I would really appreciate it if you wish to support my channel to go check out my Patreon account. Uh, link is in the description box below. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. All the best and bye bye.